Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to be doing some more Docker. We'll install Docker on a Windows 10 Pro machine and a Mac. So stay tuned, let's get started. Alright, in this section we're going to install Docker on a Windows 10 PC. All right, here we are. This is my Windows 10 fresh install. You're gonna go up here and we're gonna go to Docker. Go ahead and go to Docker right here. And products, Docker desktop. Here you have the option to download for a Mac or a Windows. In this case, it's a Windows, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Get Docker. <clears throat> and so now that is downloading here. As soon as that's done, we'll go ahead and install. Now one of the things I will tell you is that Docker is required, that requires that you have Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise version. If you don't have that version of it, Windows, you can go to the Docker toolbox and we'll open that up here real quick. For non-Windows Pro, you can follow the steps here and get Docker installed on the Windows. And I believe that this use is, uh, yeah, so let's see here it uses, I believe it uses, it used to use uh, Oracle's VirtualBox. Um, do, 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 do. Yep. Shows you here, here's vir, vir, virtual box and everything. So I'm pretty sure that's how it does this one. Um, in this case, uh, this is a Windows Pro machine, so I don't have to worry about that. Now we're gonna go ahead and install this guy. Click yes. And it's gonna go through the process of downloading the packages. One of the things it's gonna do is install Hyper-V as part of uh, Docker, that's how it does. What it what it really does is inside of Windows, you have Hyper-V, which is the virtualization technology. And it actually creates a window or a Linux VM in which you're actually doing all the Docker stuff. Now, Windows is capable of doing Docker Windows containers. As you can see right here, use Windows containers instead of Linux containers. And then this is gonna be changed after installation so don't worry about it use the Linux ones unless you have specific needs for the Windows ones just click OK and it's gonna go through a bunch of installation stuff takes a couple minutes um, but not a very long time and it also requires a reboot so we'll just go ahead and watch this guy okay <laughs> all right so there it is and like I said before it says it's gonna require a Windows reboot so we're going to just hit close and restart and uh i'll reboot this machine all right here we are back we got docker here and if you look down here in the tray in just a second you're going to get the docker stuff here we'll just wait for a second as it continues to boot up all right so you see this little up notification docker is running and there it is docker still starting up but while we're doing that, let's go ahead and look over at Hyper-V. As you can see, here is the virtual machine that is running. And it's just a little Linux machine. Um, we'll go ahead and look at the settings so I can show you some of that stuff. Here we go, settings. So it has two gigs of RAM. Uh, looks like it's by default has two processors, uh, a little bit of an HD hard drive, and um, should have networking and a few other things there. <clears throat> so that's what this is. So now you get this pop up over here when it's finally finished. Docker desktop really wants you to log in. Uh, I suggest going ahead and getting a Docker login. So here it is, uh, over here in this corner, you, they want you to log in and uh, things will get 
more exciting if you do that. So I'm going to do that. And there we are. I am logged in. And now you can see that there's Docker here. And you get all these wonderful things signed out. So the reason why you want to log in is because you can use the Docker repos, Docker hub, and stuff like that. So also down here in settings, you'll notice that you have some options. Starting up Docker desktop, automatic updates, um, doing some exposing usage statistics, resources. This is where you see that two, two CPUs, memory, and swap, and the hard drive side. That is back here. What that translates into is that here's your two gigs of RAM, here's your virtual CPU of two, and then the hard drive size. <clears throat> so if I go and I change this and say I want to go ahead and give it four CPUs and four gigs of RAM, then I can hit apply and restart. And now we'll restart the Docker instance and uh, with more horsepower. So if you're if you're running this for development purposes, or maybe you need have a CPU that needs a little bit more horsepower for for your Docker instances, this is how you change it in the desktop version to give yourself a little bit more resources. This does take a few minutes or just a little bit because what it's doing is basically redoing that virtual machine. It's 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 making it giving it more CPUs, more RAM. Um, and if I change the hard drive space, it, it'd be creating a larger uh, VHDX. So <clears throat> you have that going on. And like I said, this take just a minute. And there you have it. All right. So, what? how do you do stuff with Docker? Well, that's a good question. Basically, all you need to do is go to PowerShell and type in Docker. And there you go. So, as you've seen previously when we were doing stuff in the Docker uh, online portal, uh, basically everything you did there now you can do here from the command line and PowerShell on Docker desktop. So this concludes the Windows installation portion of this. Stay tuned because uh, to a different segment of this video, we're gonna we have the Mac versions on here too. So I'll put the timestamps in the description so that you can uh, go to the section that you want to look at and all that good stuff. And if you like this stuff, don't forget, please subscribe, hit the bell icon. It's super helpful for me. And uh, hopefully you're getting some good information out of this. Okay, here we go. We're going to get started on the Mac install. So behind me, you can see right there is a Mac we're going to install things on. It's We're going to get Docker installed on that. And uh, so let me just... Uh, get you started with that we are remoted into that guy so over here here we are we are in that Mac we'll go to the docker website go to products again go to desktop and this time we're going to choose Mac okay get docker and it's going to give you our docker DMG Give that just a second as it downloads. Okay, now that's downloading, we're gonna open it and here we go. Basically, it's just like installing anything else. You drag it over here, Docker is gonna install. So we wanna go ahead and do that. Docker needs privileges. So you want to go ahead and do this. Again, here we are with the Docker login. I'm going to go ahead and put those in. Now I'm logged in there. It's still working on starting up for that first time. And now 
see that Docker is running. Now we can go ahead and look at the preferences on it again, like we did in Windows. Let's get these out of the way. Start Docker up and log in, automatic uses, resources, four CPUs, two gigs of RAM, one gig swap. File sharing, proxies, network, all this good stuff. Docker engine, command line. <clears throat> so you'll notice up here at the top, you will have the little Docker. So let's go ahead and, and open up a terminal. And we will do the same old Docker thing. And there you have it again, Docker version. And that is the basics of installing on a Mac. So like I said, now that you're installed on a Mac, you can do the same things we did in the previous video, video and the uh, when we're doing it online. So that's the Mac. Uh, if you want to watch the Windows version, go ahead and uh, proceed to that part of, this, of the video. Mm -hmm.